Hello again, everybody, and welcome to our next training tape, which will cover plays at the plate. This is generally one of the more exciting plays in baseball and is also one of the more scrutinized. The type of training in this video deals solely on mechanics, and remember there is not a magic spot where one has to take plays from. There are multiple areas where a play can be umpired from, but there will be some fundamental guidelines that will help all umpires be in proper position. So visualize yourself as if you are umpiring these plays and consider what you might do under these circumstances. Below are some basic concepts that should guide you in your ability to process a potential play at home plate. The first one we will look at is working the point of the plate. A common issue with umpires is that they commit to the first base extended position right away without ever seeing where the origin of the throw is coming from. Once the ball is hit, the plate umpire should back straight up so he can see where the ball is hit, a touch at third base, and the origin of the throw. On this first play, you can see a great shot of the plate umpire using the point of plate concept. That's the way it should look once we hear the crack of the bat. The main reason why working point of plate is important is not just helping us pick up where the catcher's hip is, but also to cut down the amount of movement needed to get into proper position. The less movement we have allows for more flexibility on which angles we can use, and most importantly allows us to be set as we make our calls. This is a great example all around of how to work the plate. But most importantly, it starts at the top with the concept of point of plate. This next play is an example of committing yourself to one side without reading the play. This umpire has already made up his mind that he is going to take this play first base extended and is therefore not working the point of the plate. For many umpires, it is a microcosm of learned habits working one-man games. Other umpires have been told over the years to take plays in a certain spot for a specific amount of plays and take all other plays in another spot. Again, there is no magic location on where to take a play, and cheating to a specific spot without collecting all evidence could lead to a major breakdown during a game. Most importantly, we don't want to let the runner get between us and the tag. Going back to our fundamental principles we looked at, let's focus on item number two. Picking up the catcher's inside hip starts early in our progression. The inside hip is going to be the one closest to the third base foul line. This is predicated on the positioning of the catcher in relation to the origin of the throw and the quality of such throw. Being able to successfully do that is also contingent on working point of plate. On this play, please pay attention to where the left hip of the catcher goes. The plate umpire identifies this as the inside hip, and as the throw takes the catcher toward the first base line, he follows the catcher's inside hip and is in great position to see the swipe tag at home plate. The runner's hand does get in there, and if we overcommit to one position, we might not be able to see that. Having a good feel for the type of play that will develop comes down to fundamentals as you saw in the last play. Here we have a pretty good chance a swipe tag will develop since the throw is coming from right field. We don't need to cheat into the third baseline extended position, but we can begin to take a step in that direction provided we begin point of plate. This image is what the last play looked like. When we are working off the inside hip of the catcher, there are three points of contact we should be able to see in this case. The catcher's inside hip, the catcher's glove, and the runner's right foot. The left foot is airborne, so our eyes need to transition lower to see if his right foot gets a piece of the plate. Remember, all of this doesn't happen unless we begin point of plate, pick up the catcher's inside hip, and then go with that same hip to where the tag is about to happen. Compare this next play with the last play. Does distance matter when ruling on these plays? It sure does. For us to be able to work the wedge, we can all probably work a step closer than we normally do. This play you are seeing is a good example of that. That extra step of being farther back could be the difference in seeing the base runner pulling his hand back to avoid the tag. Here is an angle in which we should strive to get whenever possible. So now the last item we want to expand on is not letting the runner get between you and the tag. You have heard this phrase earlier when discussing play number two and should be a guide for the angles you don't want when ruling on these plays. 
There are a multitude of things that can be missed if we let this happen. Again, we talked about how assuming what plays are going to happen do not equate for an exact position to rule on. Here the plate umpire is assuming a collision is going to happen in front of home plate and takes himself out of position. The base runner is between the tag and him the first time and also between the ball that subsequently is on the ground later when the catcher tries to tag him again. Less is more and sticking to our fundamentals eliminates unnecessary movements. There are no magic spots on the field to make certain calls. On this play, the inside hip of our catcher changes, which is why the runner got between the tag and the plate umpire. The catcher has taken this throw on the foul side of the third base line, so his right hip is now his inside hip. That's the hip we need to follow on this play. If we pick up the positioning of our catcher early, we will see that he is slightly up the third base line and the throw is offline. That's the time for us to go with the catcher so we will be in position to see the location of the tag. It is not often we have taken plays from this position, but we cannot assume that every swipe tag is going to be taken from the third baseline extended. We would like to thank you for tuning in to our latest training tape. The idea behind these are to give you more opportunities to develop recall and add more plays to your tool belt. There may not be a cookie cutter answer for every player situation, but there is something that could help you down the line. We also appreciate our loyal followers as we continue to spread the vibe of improved umpiring.